Good morning. Welcome to Our Redeemer. Maybe you remember that old question, if you were to die tonight and stand before God, what would you say? As we hear Jesus today in our gospel describe the judgment, the only thing that the sheep say is, when, Lord, which is a good testimony to the fact that our judgment is something that is done on the basis of faith. It is done by Jesus, and we can look forward to that day when we stand before God to rejoice in his salvation. That's the theme of our service today. We'll begin with hymn 680. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worry and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake.
Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God, our refuge and strength, have mercy on your church as we come in prayer before you. Answer us not in judgment on our sins, but in peace and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. In the final judgment, the beast is destroyed and the Son of Man is presented to the Ancient of Days and given a kingdom that will never end. Lesson from the prophet Daniel. As I looked, thrones were placed and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, its wheels were burning fire. 
A stream of fire issued and came out from before him. A thousand thousands served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. I looked then because of the sound of the great words that the horn was speaking. And as I looked, the beast was killed, and its body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. As for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man, and he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, one that shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Faith that stands at the judgment and marvels at Christ is also faith that overflows with love for others. A lesson from 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, as is right, 
because your faith is growing abundantly and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast about you in the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith in all your persecutions and in the afflictions that you are enduring. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are also suffering, since indeed God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you and to grant relief to you who are afflicted as well as to us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. And he comes on that day to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at among all who have believed because our testimony to you was believed. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 25. Glory to you, Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it. To me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry? or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you. And he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, 
as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we come face to face with that moment of judgment, the day on which Jesus says the Son of Man will come and there will be this great sorting out of sheep from goats. And surely the thought of standing there before the throne, waiting for the judge to nod in one direction or the other, is an absolutely terrifying prospect. For we imagine that standing before God's judgment will be a lot like the kind of scrutiny that we've become acquainted with during our lives here on this earth. You know how nowadays there are cameras just about everywhere. And on any given day, you leave a record of where you've been and what you've been up to on literally dozens of store security systems and highway cameras and ring doorbells. You know how everything that you search for and look at and click on on your phone is recorded and fed into the algorithms in Silicon Valley. And so you begin to imagine that standing before the judgment throne of God will be kind of like a wise parent who takes a teenager's phone and looks through the phone's history to see what that teen has been up to. You expect that as you come before the throne of God, the tapes of your life will be played. And they will look like what you know that they look like. There will be some moments of your life that are good. There will be a lot of things that you just kind of did and that weren't necessarily good, but also weren't necessarily bad. And then there will be those things, that browser history, that you are downright ashamed and embarrassed of and and don't want to see the light of day. For this is what the lives of Christians look like. Even St. Paul himself said, the evil I do not do, do not want to do, this I keep on doing. But the judgment that Jesus described for us today doesn't go like that. It doesn't begin with a review of the tapes Actually, if you look carefully, you'll see that before the judge hits play on the tapes of our lives, the judgment has already been taken place. Notice how Jesus orders events on that day. First of all, the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the nations are gathered before him. On that day, Jesus will have literally drawn all men to himself. Everyone who has ever lived will be drawn to Jesus. Jesus will be revealed as he really is, the black hole at the center of this universe, the irresistible gravitational force that pulls all to stand before him. He gathers them all there, and then wordlessly, he begins to separate the sheep from the goats. He places some on his right and some on his left, but notice this, that all of that is done before a single word has been spoken. And then, when he does begin to speak, he turns to the sheep and he explains to them the basis on which he made this judgment. And again, the first thing that he does is not to hit play on the tapes of their lives. No, he says something quite surprising. He says, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. This is on the basis on which he has taken the sheep and put them on his right. They are blessed by the Father, and that word blessed is a word that always has behind it the gracious, giving nature of our God, a merciful Father in heaven who gives what is not deserved. He has given to these his his sheep, What but a kingdom that was prepared from the foundation of the world. And those words from the foundation of the world call to mind the way that St. John describes Jesus as the lamb who was slain from the foundation of the world. In other words, the one great deed that counts in God's judgment is the death and resurrection of Jesus. 
and his blood which was shed to cover over the sins of this entire world. And again, if you think about the order of events, you realize that he is telling those on his right that they are saved from the foundation of the world before they had even existed, before they had taken a single breath, before they had been born, before they had lived, before they had yelled at their parents, before they had rebelled, before they had grown up and become parents themselves and yelled at their children, before any of the good or any of the bad that make up our lives has taken place. God, in his divine grace, had prepared this kingdom for them. And so they stand with him, having received a kingdom simply by faith, by trusting in the one who was sitting on the throne and his free gift of salvation that was given to them. In fact, if you look extra carefully, you'll notice that the traces of divine grace are still there, even in what the judge says to those whom he sends away to the eternal fire. Notice that as he speaks to those on his left, he says, the fire was prepared originally not for them, but for the devil and the evil angels. In other words, God is a God who really means it when he says he wants all to be saved. He did not create some people simply to damn them to hell. The sad reality of the fact is, though, that there are people who don't trust a free lunch. They don't want anything to do with a God who lets scoundrels off the hook easy, drowns all sin in an ocean of grace, pops the cork on a bottle of champagne and says, come now, let's celebrate. They say, no thanks. I'd rather have life lived out under terms that are fair so God can judge me for the life that I lived. I will stand before him and say, I tried my best, Lord. Isn't that all that you can ask of me? And the sad reality is that is, if that's the way that you want to be judged, then that's the way that you will be judged. And when the king hits play on the footage of their lives, he can't seem to recall a single good thing that those people had ever done. You wanted to be judged on the basis of trying your best? Well, then let me show you all the places in your life where you failed, one after another. See, this is what unbelief does. It rots everything from the inside out. It takes whatever good we might carry out and it, it turns it all bad and rotten. And at the end of the day, this judge sends those unbelievers away. They will not gloomily sulk around and spoil God's party. But just as much as unbelief rots everything from the inside out, so faith transforms everything into the righteousness of Christ. Faith knows nothing but Jesus, and, and Jesus in his grace is enough to transform everything about us. So that when the judge finally does hit play on the tapes of our lives, our first reaction might be to wonder if the tapes have been altered, the browser history rewritten. For the description that he gives of our lives doesn't sound a lot like what I know. When I think about what my life is like, I see the mix of good and bad and human nature being what it is. I'm far more apt to focus on the bad and dwell on that. But this judge, when he hits play, he sees you in a way that you do not see yourself. For he looks at your life and wonder of wonders, he sees only good only good all the way through. I was hungry and you fed me. Thirsty and you gave me a drink. Sick or in prison and you came and you visited me. Not the slightest mention of one single bad thing because in this judge's eyes all of our bad, all of our sin has been so thoroughly drowned in the blood of Jesus that it has sunk to the depths of the ocean and God, who cannot by nature forget, 
has forgotten about it entirely. And he sees you as only good all the way through. Now this runs so contrary to our consciences which tend to be punitive and fixate on the bad things, the sin, that it's no wonder that those sheep would balk and say, hold on a second, Lord. That tape, it doesn't sound like me. When did this happen? How could it be? I don't think you have the right person. And he says, no, no, no. It is you. It's you, the new you, the new you who has been transformed by faith in Christ. You know what the scriptures say. The scriptures say that Christ comes and dwells in our hearts through faith. And, and this is what God sees when he looks at you. He sees how he, by his grace, through word and sacrament and the working of his spirit, has planted Christ in your heart so that you are perfect and righteous in his eyes. And this transforms everything so that even the smallest little acts are coming out of faith. And in wonder of wonders, are loved and praised and remembered by him. You know, everything that he recites is just the most mundane, ordinary things that we might do on any given day. There are no grand works of piety or marvelous acts of huge gifts of charity here. It's just the small little things in everyday life that are so normal that, generally speaking, our minds wouldn't even think to store them in long-term memory. Does a mother remember how many lunches she's packed for her child or how many water bottles she's filled? Does a friend think twice about spending Friday night with that person who's been going through a rough time? There is nothing at all unusual about such things save for this, that Christ himself mysteriously is present in those people to receive those acts himself. This is truly mysterious and wonderful. The world in which we live is more glorious and enchanted than we sometimes think it is. And our God does not merely approve of loving acts of kindness that we do to the people in our lives. He is somehow so in love with them that he himself cannot help but be there to receive them from us. I tell you, whatever you did to the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Faith which knows nothing but Christ now is truly floored. To have eyes that should consider that my Lord and the judge who will sit on that throne is never far away. He is hiding in plain sight. He's hiding in plain sight in the people who fill your ordinary life. If you go home today and you fix Sunday brunch and you set it on the table, you feed Jesus. If hearing Jesus' words today reminds you of that person you know who's in prison and you decide to spend your Sunday afternoon writing him a letter, you are writing a letter to Jesus. If it calls to mind someone you know who's been lonely and hurting and you call her up and you chat, you're chatting with Jesus. This is the mysterious wonder of the judge who would identify himself with the least among us and would be delighted to see his children by faith bringing into this loveless world that selfless giving love that he has poured out on us. He loves nothing more than to see it spilling out from us in lives of generosity to others. And if you do that, you don't go home then and ruin the whole thing by patting yourself on the back and thinking about what a wonderful person you've been. You know on what basis God's judgment is rendered on the basis of Jesus' blood and righteousness, not your own. But I'd also like for you to think about this. You don't have to go and ruin those simple acts of love by endlessly questioning your motivation for doing them. A God who can be so forgetful of our sins 
is certainly not one who is about to be a stickler for us having the perfect motivation. See, all of our impure motives and wrong desires, just like all of our sins, have been drowned by the blood of Jesus. When your God sees you, he sees only good all the way through. So at the end of the day, it turns out that the judgment doesn't go anything like we would have thought that it would go. Our God does not look at us the way that we look at ourselves. His grace operates differently, and we are blessed for it. And neither do we now look at our God in the same way. For we realize that he's not far away in heaven, but hiding close at hand. And waiting to delight in and remember the acts of love that we, his children, carry out in his name. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For an increase of mercy among all the baptized, that they would bless and not curse. Forgive as they have been forgiven. Give as they have been given to. And speak the truth in love, not with anger and pride. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For industries and the service sectors of this land, that their labors may be just, and the work they do may be profitable for all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a culture of life in our land and throughout the world, that all life from the womb to the grave would be cherished, and that all who view life as expendable would have their hearts and minds changed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have been placed in authority over us, that they would govern with a mind focused on peace and the general welfare of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the freedoms we enjoy in our country, let us give thanks to the Lord, that we would never take these freedoms for granted and always strive to defend and protect them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, for those preparing to undergo surgery, for the elderly and shut-in, and for all who desire our prayers, that according to God's good and gracious will, they may receive healing, comfort, and assurance of his care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who receive Holy Communion this day, that they would eat and drink the very body and blood of Christ with faith in these words, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you have given us to eat and to drink in this sacrament. Through this gift, you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Once again, good morning to you. And to draw your attention to some upcoming things as we enter into the Advent and Christmas season that will be taking place here at Our Redeemer, I would direct you to the info center and the bulletin board that's out in the entryway. There are a number of sign-up forms there. Uh, One for uh, buying, purchasing poinsettias to to, uh, decorate our sanctuary for Christmas season. I believe the deadline for signing up for one of those is the 28th of November. We have an Advent by Candlelight evening for women on December 1st, and the sign-up sheet for that is out there. We're also taking a fellowship, a fun trip down to the German Christmas market in Chicago on Saturday, December 10th. There will be a bus going uh, from our Redeemer down to Chicago and back. We hope that you can join us for that. There's a sign-up sheet as well out on the Info Center. Today, we also have some things going on today to highlight. Uh, Most importantly, after the 1030 service, we'll be holding a call meeting and extending a call for an associate pastor here at Our Redeemer. So if you're able to come back for that meeting, that would be great. Um, But uh, even if not, please keep our congregation in your prayers and and the man we call as well. And you're invited to stick around for our Sunday School and Bible Study Hour that begins at 9.15. As you head out today, take a moment, say hi to those who are worshiping with you, your brothers and sisters here at Our Redeemer. God bless you.